What is that? Paste it in chart box, sir. Oh, oh, you want me to paste it? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, here we go. For each customer ID, how much is the total amount? Is what that is. Total spent is nothing but the friendly name. Cool. Okay, now again, having, remember, so let's say, come back here. If you recall, we'll put this here. We'll say select star from where uh, sum of amount say is greater than 100. If you try to run this one, so let's say, oops, is this here. This is the first one. Oh, okay, that's number one. In the second scenario, we're adding a where, but in the where, if you recall, we're adding a filter. We're, uh, more precisely, we're adding a aggregation. PG admin. Okay. Let's run it. It will give you an error. In other words, when we are using a where, remember, okay, I'll just say, when you're using a where, you cannot use aggregation operations. In other words, you can say where amount is greater, no aggregation. So this, I think, will be okay. Come here, back to admin, and say, run it. It's running it, getting everything. Where amount? Okay, nothing is greater than 100. So let's say, juice up from that. Notice it is taking some time. Hmm. Let's see, where amount is greater than 10.99 is what it is doing. And what we're asking is sum of amount, each customer. These are all the guys who paid more than 10.99. But ideally, if we come back here, what we want is this is where is this one. Instead of where, we'll say group by having, oops, having sum of amount and greater than, let's say, 10. No, sum of amount, it can be greater than 100 here. So we'll give 100 here. Where amount is greater than 10 here, having sum. So when do you use having? If you recall, we when, when we want to use aggregation operations as a filter where will not work when, when we are using with group by. Okay, so that's where we're bringing in group by and having together. PG admin, so delete this, run it. Okay, so now notice um, each customer ID, all these guys have greater than 100 rupees or $100 is what is going on. Everybody with me guys, quick yes please. When, when we are trying to use aggregation operations, we cannot use a where when we are using group by. Okay, but let's say, how about this one guys, just to make it, uh, you know, let's take one more scenario. Computer is slowing down. One moment, guys. Let me see if I can close some of the apps here. Oh.
this. Okay, back to here. Let me come back here, back to PG admin. And back to just closing some stuff here. Close this one. So we can close this one. Remove this. Remove this one. Minimizes. What's happening here? Hope you have fun. Good. What's this? Okay. And uh, let's say close that. Spiral. Okay. Okay. Sharing the screen again. Still slow. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Okay. What I wanted to show you is another thing is your sum of amount customer ID. Okay, if you're using okay, let me not confuse you. Keep it simple. We'll go one step at a time. Back to PG admin. And let's see where we are. Having some greater than 100. Next way, total spend. Now, now here's something, uh, something to be kept in mind, guys, okay? Total spend, having sum of amount, you cannot give the friendly name or the alias in, copy this, paste it here, copy this, total spend, copy that. You cannot give the alias there like that. You have to give the actual column name. Everybody following that, guys? These are some of the rules which should be kept in mind. So in other words, we need to actually give the amount is the actual column name, not the friendly name. The friendly name is only for the display, not for the uh, internal manipulation of the database. Quick yes, please. Back to the chat window. More time I'm stopping it, just making sure it's recording. Okay, it looks like it's on. Sharing it. Share it, okay. So that is friendly name. Then what we have, so having some of amount, we've already looked at that. Customer ID and amount, where amount is greater than two. So now notice this one, guys. We are not using group by, we are using where, now, where in the, where is like, I mean, when we use a filter, we use where? In the filter, we are actually doing a comparison. Amount is greater than, but we are not using any aggregation. So there is no problem here. Let me come back here. So I copy this. Remove these two and just say where amount. And what are we saying is greater than two. Amount is greater than two. Customer ID. We're not doing any aggregation as, and what are we calling this? Amount as spent. Okay, just to uh, we'll call this as uh, amount spent. Select customer ID amount from payment where amount is greater than two. Let's say save it. Let's say back here. Paste it. Let's say run it. Amount spent. So now what is happening, what I'm trying to convey is, we can use a where we are using a filter, but um, there is no aggregation operation here. So in other words, we can use filters in where, or uh, in other words, we can do those comparisons without aggregations, the where is working. There is no group by here. The moment you put a group by within where, you, you cannot use where. We are not able to use where with the aggregation. That is what is a slight catch there. Everybody able to uh, catch that, guys? Quick yes, please. So 
Sorry, back to the chat window. It's closing my chat here. Okay, the new name again, you cannot use the uh, friendly name there. You have to use the actual column name there. Hmm? So let's say, let's dig into what is the join operation? Join servers to combine multiple tables together. In other words, uh, again, what we've been doing is we've been getting the data only from one table. But many times in real world, we'll be getting the data from multiple tables, multiple sources of the data, big data, structured data, unstructured data, and things like that. Um, so in the, in the scope of the database, most of the times we are getting the data from multiple tables. But in the scope of the big data, we'll be getting the data from a combination of these things, structured data, unstructured data, semi-structured data, that's where Hive is going to come in. The concept will remain same, but the data will be different. That is what we learn into Hive. But this is like the, this is going to prepare you uh, to come up with uh, what's happening in Hive guys. The main reason for the different join types is to decide how to deal with the information only. So let's see, our company is holding a conference for people in the movie rental industry. So there's a conference for the movie people. We will have people register online beforehand and then log in the day of the conference. So some people are going to be registering online and when they come in, they will actually log in to the conference. So here is what is going on. After the conference, we had these tables. What is registrations? These Andrew, Bob, Charlie, and David, these are the guys who are registered before. Okay. What is logins? Logins, if you notice, Andrew and Bob, they have registered, they have attended the conference and uh, they logged in. But look at Xavier and Yolanda. What is happening is they have not registered. They have not registered, but they came in and they logged in directly. So in other words, they attended the conference directly without registering is what is going on. So what is this? These are like two different tables, different column names. But notice registration ID and login ID is the ID column. It's just, uh, it's just an ID column as simple as that. Name is a common column between both of them. What is name in the registration table is same as in the login table. The respective ID columns indicate what order they registered or logged in. And for the sake of simplicity, we will assume the names are unique. So Andrew here is same as Andrew on the right hand side. So registration names, first let us go by ABCD. For the sake of simplicity, we have sorted them. An inner join, what is an inner join will result with the set of the records that match in both tables. So Andrew, Andrew, the orange colored colors is what uh, is common between both of them. That is nothing but an inner join, okay? So slightly, if you go back to the school of end diagram representation is inner join is nothing but the intersection. Table A is the registrations, table B is the login. So let's say bring up our screen here. Say back here, snap it here, discard it here. Okay, so imagine for sake of simplicity, let's say select this one. We have who, who do we have? We go here, Andrew, Bob, Charlie, and David. So for sake of simplicity, I'll put Andrew here. So here is Andrew, and somewhere here is Bob. Let's put Charlie here. Charlie, let's say, is David. This is the registration, so we'll say, put this here. This is the registration table data. Then we have logins table, which is Xavier and Yolanda. So let's choose this one. Put Andrew Bob. We already have it. Here is Xavier. And here is Yolanda. Okay, so now if you take a look at Andrew and Bob, not only are they oh before that one, let me also put this here. This is the logins. The guys who did not register, but they came, they attended the conference and they logged in. And if you look at Andrew and Bob, something special about them 
is not only are they a part of the registration, they're also part of the logins. So they registered and then they attended the conference and they logged in. So what is that? That region is what is the intersection. It is something common between both the Venn diagrams. Everybody with me, quick yes, please. That is at a slightly visual level, but what, do we, what are we doing here? This is how, this is the syntax for writing an in inner join. Select star from table A, which is nothing but the registrations. Table B is the login. So we're saying inner join. You can also say join on table A dot column match. In other words, it needs to be at least one column, which is common between both of them. Let me go back to the mirror. Mute all. Okay, close this one. So back here, so column match is what is the name column. There needs to be at least one column, which needs to be common between both of them. And otherwise we cannot do a join this. They can have different name. Um, the, the column content needs to be the same more precisely, but we'll not go into that scenario. So let's say come back here. So that is, if you come here, now you can also do the reverse. You can also put logins. If you come back here, you can put the logins on this side and registration on this side. So here is, it looks like visually the data, oops, oh, this here. Visually the data is rearranged, but the meaning is the same. Uh, Andrew and Bob continue to be, continue to be the same. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So take a look at this one. If you are now select star from registrations in a joint logins, that is the syntax. Syntax for the SQL, that's how we write it. Name is a common column. So there is registrations and logins, that is a common area. Andrew and Bob are the two rows that we will get out of this one, which means we are going to be selecting these two rows from here, these two rows from here, and that is what we will get. What is that? That is in a joint. Short and sweet, inner join is the intersection. Intersection is a common area, back to school, Venn diagrams, and things like that. Everybody catching it, guys? In other words, let's say back here. Okay. So, so visualize it is picking up this row. Say, say annotate. okay, here's annotate. So it is, it is picking up this row from here, this row from here. And so let's say, oh, I don't think it will me. So that's what this is coming from the left-hand side, coming from the left-hand side. And this is picking up here, coming from the right-hand side, coming from the right-hand side. And it's just putting them together based on the name. Then maybe you can visualize it, it actually deletes this column. So Andrew, this is a common column. Login ID registration up here is the other kind of columns or the information which is there on the left-hand side of the table and the right-hand side of the table of the Venn diagram. Catching it, guys. Quick yes, please. Okay. Okay. So now let's see what do we have. Well, we can say select register ID login name. If you say select star, it will give you everything. If you can give specific columns, select registration ID, login name, login ID from registration in our join logins. Then we're only getting the specific columns not duplicated. Table order won't matter whether you give registrations or login on the right hand side, the order will not matter, it will be the same. Okay, so here is payments and here is customers. In payments, we have payments information, in customers, we have customers information. And what we are doing, select star from payment. So customer ID is a common column, remember, one rule, one thing that you need to manually keep in mind is there needs to be at least one column which is common between both the tables, payment and customer. That is a customer ID. So now by the time we get this, all the left-hand side information will be all the payments information for the customer ID and the right-hand side information will all be is customer information. So here is the payments and the customers. So let's say back here, select star from, let's say from, Payment, the first one is payment, and we're saying in the join 
it's like a customer. So the second table, customer, and what are we saying? We can say on payment dot customer. So on, that's the syntax again, payment, oops, payment uh, dot customer underscore ID equals to customer dot customer underscore ID. So I copy that, so I run it. Oh, I'm sorry, on, on dot again, on space. There it is. So copy that, pasting it, on dot after. Okay, looks like Pratisha caught that already. There it is. So now, this is the payment information. Among these things, ideally, we would be interested in the amount. This is 7.99 was done. This payment was done on that day by this customer, Peter Menard. It's, that's his email. This is his rest of the customer information. So the left-hand side information is coming from the payments table. The right-hand side information is coming from the customer's table. We have now, we are now, this is what we mean by getting the data from multiple tables. We will later repeat this to three tables, four tables, and five tables and increase the number of tables. But that is uh, how we get the data from multiple tables. Everybody with me, guys? Quick yes, please. OK, so now let's extend this. Now notice, um, we don't want all of them. We want only specific. We don't want a star of it. So let's say I come back here, put this here, put this here. We are only interested in, let's say, payment underscore ID, customer underscore ID, and let's say first underscore name, and let's say, what else we want? Payment ID, customer ID, you know, joint customer and payment also is what we can do, okay. So in other words, payment ID, let's also put amount. Okay, and we're joining customer first name, comma, Last underscore name. Let's try this one. Copy this. So I come back here. There it is. So now what is happening is customer ID. What is happening? It is kind of uh, seems to be getting confused. Which one we are referring? Customer ID is there in both of the columns. So you say payment dot customer. You can also say customer. Run this, no problem. You're only retrieving specific. On payment dot customer ID, that is the, uh, that is a common column, that is the syntax. You're saying you want to join from payment and customer. When you say from payment, inner join customer, you're saying from these two tables, you want something. When you say on, this is where you're giving an indication to the SQL, saying that, hey, customer ID is the column which is same. I want you to compare the customer ID on the left-hand side in the payments table with the customer ID in the customer. And that's how I want you to detect or determine that these two are the same rows. That's the syntax on, that is what it is. Okay, so let's say, what did we do? Customer ID. So if I, oops. Yeah, this will give you error because Customer ID is there in both of them. So what you do, you can say payment dot customer ID. So payment ID and amount are there only in the payments table. It doesn't get confused. First name and last name are there only in the customer table. But whereas customer ID is there in both the, both the columns. So you can either give payment dot customer ID or customer dot customer ID. And that's what we're running here. We're getting only specific columns. We don't want the rest of the ID columns and things like that. Maybe we don't even need a payment ID also here is what it is. Everybody with me guys, quick yes please. You can also reverse the orders, okay? So how to join, they will always specify how to do with values only in one of the tables. Full order join, left order join, right order join. So take a look at this guys. Don't mute, uh, don't uh, unmute uh, yourself if you're not talking. 
Um, so let's say uh, come back. We have matched the Andrew and Bob. Andrew and Bob are there in both of them. So in other words, before we go there, let's come back here. Now let's try to understand what is left out to join. Left out to join is, let's say, we'll put these things. Let's see if I'm able to undo this. Put back registrations and login. Go back to the original one. Let's choose this one. So Andrew, Bob, Charlie, and was the fourth guy. David. And then we have Xavier and Yolanda. Now what is left out to join? This is left out to join. Going from left, you only want this data. It's like it's a complete snapshot of A. What does that mean? Imagine you want all the registrations. You don't want the, whether they have logged in. Andrew and Bob, they have not only registered, but they have also logged in. Okay, Xavier and Yolanda, they have not registered, but they attended the conference and they logged in. So what does that mean? We want a list of all the registrations. Okay, we want a list of all the registrations is what it is. Um, so what is that? That is the complete snapshot of the registration. So what is that? That is left out to John. So let's try to understand what that means. Take a look at this. Charlie and David are there in the registrations, but they are, they're not there in the logins. They registered, but they did not attend the conference. Xavier and Yolanda, they did not register, but they attended the conference. In other words, these two are either there on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side, but they are not there in both of them. Uh, Andrew and Bob are there in both of them. Everybody with me, guys. Quick yes, please. Okay, so what is this one? This is full auto join. Full auto join means back here. Sorry about that. Okay. What is, uh, okay, so this is the story of the, all the snapshot of A, the left-hand side. But let's take another scenario, take a look at this one. Let's say we want all the guys who attend the, attended the conference. That is going to be Andrew, Bob, Z, 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 Xavier and Yolanda. That is going to be the complete snapshot of the right-hand side. This is going to be called as right outer join. These are A, B, X and Y are the guys who attended the conference. All the guys who attended the conference are there in the login table. Okay, but what is full auto join? Full auto join is, let's say use this one. This is full auto join. Give me a list of all the guys, whether they have attended the conference or, sorry about that. Whether they have attended the conference or they have registered. That is going to be A, B, C, D and X and Y. That is going to be full auto join. So here, this is full auto join. That's a snapshot of A and B. Okay, this is again, let's say come here, full auto join. Next, what is this one? This is registrations and logins. So what will this do? Full auto join will give you everything. It is picking up the left-hand side. Andrew, Bob, Charlie, and David are coming from the left-hand side. Next, so there is Andrew and Bob. But for Charlie and David, what are we doing? We are, they don't have any login ID and name because they did not login. Then come here. So what do you do? You, it'll, you put the null values or it'll put the null values. And now come to logins. These are the guys who attended the conference, but they did not. So on the left hand uh, side, you put the null values indicating these are not there. What is this? This is full out of join. You have Andrew, Bob, Charlie, A, B, C, D, X, and Y. But what you're doing is the columns, for which there is no data, you're putting a null value. Everybody catching it, guys. Quick yes, please. Where, with where? Okay, slightly more detail. Okay. Let's say come back here. Back here. Sir, so repeat, say, repeat it again, sir. Yeah. Copy this. Come here. Instead of inner join, we'll say full. Oops. Outer join customer payment and customer and payment ID first name and last name. We're doing a full auto join from between customer and payment as simple as that. So let's say come back here back to PG admin. 
this one. Now we're getting everything. How on is working. Again, one more time, on is slightly confusing. It's just a syntactical way. When we do a join, remember, the first rule of the condition is there needs to be at least one column which is common between both the tables. Otherwise, we cannot do a join. So what is it? That is what on is telling. On is telling the SQL engine that, hey, customer ID is a common column between the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So we need at least one. That could be two or three also. We'll discuss that in, in a slightly more advanced scenarios. And so that is full auto join. Notice what is happening is full auto join. We're getting almost everybody. We'll get almost everybody here, 14,500. That is all the rows in that one. Okay, but uh, let's see. Okay, now take a look at this one. What we are doing is we're doing a full auto join. Everything is same. Where table A, table A is the registration, the left hand side uh, dot ID is null or table B is null. What is that doing? What you're saying is, give me all the attendants who have either registered or logged in, but they have not done both of them. People who have registered and attended. So in other words, let's say back here, if you take A and B, Andrew and Bob, except Andrew and Bob, what is that? For that, you do table ID. You add a where, a filter condition where you say table A, registrations dot customer ID is null or um, login dot customer ID is null. You can do it in whatever order you want. So here is registration and logins. Okay, the intersection is part is where we have Andrew and Bob. Except those two give me the remaining. What are you asking? Give me a list of all the guys who register, but um, who, who, who register, um, but they did not attend. That will be C and D, Charlie and David. So Xavier and Yolanda, they are the guys who did not register, but they attended. That's what that is. So if we come back here, let's try that first. Paste it here. This is a full auto join. Now what we are saying is where payment dot customer underscore ID is null. Okay. So this is, we'll put it in here. To start with, we'll do this one. Right. Take this real quick, guys. Sorry about that.
Okay, sorry about that, guys. Everybody with me, quick yes, are you all there? So let's see, now we are getting nothing. Where payment.customer ID is null, we are getting nothing, but let's say or customer dot customer ID, say just give caps here, those are keywords. Let's try that. Okay, I think there should be customer dot. So accept the intersection, give me everything is what we're trying to get. Ah, so in this data, we don't have anything guys, as simple as that, I think. That's what is going on here. Uh, I'm sorry, this is registrations and logins. For our data, ours is much more uh, real world data and things like that. So um, we don't have anything, any such scenarios coming up here. Login's name, on registration. So one more time, on is a syntactical way where we are telling the SQL engine. This is a common column. Name is a common column between these two, left-hand side and the right-hand side. Catching it, guys? Quick yes, please. Okay, so now take a look at this one. What is happening? Where this is, we were doing a full auto join on registration's name and login's name, where registrations dot register ID is null or login dot login ID is null. Ah, so, okay, interesting. So ideally, or this is, I think, um, let's see what we have here. This is nothing but uh, one and three, one and three. We're picking up one and three, uh, Andrew, one and three, Charlie and David. <laughs> my bad, okay. Let's see what's happening here. So what we're doing is we are going the registration ID. Registration ID is null or login ID is null. So Charlie and David, remember, they're on the left-hand side. This is, this is, this is, uh, what did we do here? Uh, this is what is accomplishing this, guys where registration.registration ID or login.login .login ID is null, except Andrew and, uh, except Andrew and uh, what, what else is that guy? A, B, B for Bob, right? We are uh, getting everything. Charlie and David have registered, but they, they have not attended the conference. In other words, they are not in the intersection. Xavier and, uh, uh, Yolanda, they have attended the conference. They are there in the login. They are there in the login, but they have not. Uh, they have not registered is what it is. Guys. So, okay, so that's excluding, this is excluding the intersection part of it. And what is the magic? Where registrations dot region regi registration ID is not. What is that? That is the syntax. Again, another thing I will Say so you need to manually remember that you need to uh, you need to keep that in mind. That is how you extract the intersection part of it. These the joins are the techniques when you enter the world of SQL, guys. The joins are the techniques. This is these are like the fours and the sixes. When you are going to a single table where you are doing a select group by and things like that is where you are taking the singles. But the joins is where you are hitting the boundaries and. 80 to 90 percent or maybe 70 to 80 percent of the times when you enter the SQL world you'll be working with joints you'll be getting you'll be joining multiple tables uh, sometimes you want the intersection sometimes you want the left hand side sometimes you want the right hand side sometimes you want the full outer join sometimes you accept the intersection you want everything else this is how we'll be thinking it cool in other words that's a tough one guys i won't say it is cool but uh, stick with me we'll try to look at a few more scenarios and things like that so there, uh, there it is Let's see what we have here. This is the payment information, customer information. We're doing a full auto join. Full auto join gives you everything. Let's see what is happening. Now, if you say customer.customer .customer ID is null, payment.payment .payment ID is null, then what's happening is we don't have anything uh, which is not there in the intersection, which is not there in the intersection, but it is there, there either on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. We don't have any data. In real world, you may not have any data, okay? Everybody with me, quick yes, please. Okay, so back to count of distinct customer ID. Big question from Pravalika, let's see what she has here. Registration ID is null means we are trying to access the blank rows. 
because without id we are not going to enter the right name yes it looks like what you are saying is right probably now the same thing what i said you are restating it another way okay so select count of distinct customer id distinct customer id is unique customer id is you are counting how many unique customer ids are there that is 599 a same customer can make multiple payments when they when they rent multiple when they rent multiple uh, um, multiple dvds they'll be making multiple payments that's why the same customer will have multiple uh, rows and things like that so we are counting we are saying hey how many unique customers ids are there that's 599 as simple as that everybody with me guys quick yes please we have done this yesterday we are getting the data only from one count and distinct remember they are built in functions okay and now comes the left outer join so we want everything in table a table a is our registrations we want all the guys who registered whether they attended the conference or not okay so what is this you will say left outer join instead instead of full you will say left you can also say left join okay so everything in table a whether they are there in table b or not all the guys who registered whether they have attended the conference or not ab also attended conference cd did not attend the conference table b now now take a look at table b guys imagine a scenario you just want the table b snapshot of the table b where which does not include the intersection that is another technique we'll see we'll try to see that so here it is left out to job all the registrations i want a b c d andrew bob charlie and david you just say left out to john it will give you everything okay so notice andrew bob charlie and david we are joining both of them when you join both of them what is happening is it is selecting the columns on the right hand side but for charlie and david it's putting null values because they they do not have any any values on the right hand side everybody catching it guys catching catching the null part of it please Oh, as simple as that. So notice the orange colored part of it. But for Charlie and David, we have null values getting displayed there. Left of how to join with where? Again, another technique. Now, gentlemen, ladies, imagine I'm going to put some pressure on you. Today, when we complete our sessions, guys, the joins part of it. I want you to go home. I want you to read this ten times today. I want you to look at these slides. i want you to get this picture i get this concept into your heads 10 times today for the sake of simplicity i'm taking a little bit of um uh, freedom here and i'm going to put the pressure why again in the world of sql whether it is high pig spark sql scala or anything you'll be coming across sql python also will come across sql okay what will happen is um we will be thinking in terms of joins we'll be using joins a lot so today itself you go home at then and try to look at these different concepts and 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 register them or digest them or sync them up try to look at them five times if not 10 times tomorrow you'll find it very very easy is what it's i'm going to force you think in terms of registrations and conference and see if you're able to think in uh, in in those lines and and try to put some uh, due do some due due diligence is what it is guys okay so that i will force you keep that in mind so now take a look at this another technique left outer join with where get rows unique to the left table what does that mean take a look at this if you only wanted entries in table a which do not include the intersection it's like saying give me all the registrations but i do not want all those guys who registered and attended what is so in other words take a look at this where table b dot id is null means take a look at this Andrew, Bob, Charlie, and David. Now, what is happening is this is left out a join, but we are adding a where condition here. We are only choosing Charlie and David. What is Charlie and David? They are this part, table A. If you want the table A minus intersection, you say table B dot ID is now. Another important technique, another useful technique, another technique you will be coming across a lot in the real world and things like that. Okay, so there is Charlie and David. They are not in the intersection, but they are on. They are on the left hand side. The exact opposite is the right outer join. You can also get the uh, uh, you can also get the reverse. 
which is, let's say, come back here, okay, which is the table B. So what do you do? Instead of table A, table, you, you just interchange the locations of the table A and table B, the right-hand side. You'll, you'll get only Xavier and Yolanda. That's as simple as that. But let's see what we have. Here is the films. Here is the inventory. So the films is nothing but the DVDs. Here is, you know, how many we have in each store. Now, what are we doing? We are doing left join. Left join is all the DVDs who, which are there in the inventory. Imagine um, um, there are two stores. Let's say one is in Hyderabad, another one is in Mumbai. Uh, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, these are the two DVDs both the stores have in their inventory. Okay. Um, um, the, the, or here is a, a Dinosaur. Dinosaur is there both in Mumbai. Uh, Hyderabad is store 81. Mumbai is store 82. And there it is. So Dinosaur and Ace Goldfinger are there in both of them. Okay. But take a look at this. Where inventory.filmid is now means they are there on the left hand side. Um, what are we doing? Film. The DVDs are there, but the inventory is, inventory is not there. So films. Films is what we are listing. So this is like, these are all the films, the DVDs. We are probably listing them. Hey, they are there in your catalog. The film is nothing but these are all the list of movies in your catalog. But are they in the inventory? No, they are not in the inventory. Fantasia, Apollo, Teen, Ergonaut, Stone, Art, Ridgemont and things like that. They are not there in the inventory, but the films are there in our catalog. Think of the left-hand side as a catalog. So where inventory.filmid is null is what it is giving. And that's what we get. We can also do the reverse. Right join is essentially the opposite of the left join. So that is the right join. And right join, you can just say right join right away. And you can also do the saying where table a.id uh, is null. That is doing what uh, earlier one has done. So it is up to you whether you say left or right, left versus right, or whether you just interchange. The A and B is up to you guys. As simple as that, right, John? Is what it is. So that is the story of the joints. Everybody, sorry about that. Let's see where we are. Okay. Okay, let's do this, guys. Let's take a short five minute break. Oh. Let's take a short five minute break. We'll come back and I'll do a quick assessment here. Sorry about that, guys. 12.40, let's regroup in a moment. Everybody okay?
<clears throat> okay guys i'm back i'm back guys are you guys back can you give me a quick yes please great thank you so what we'll do we'll stop the share for a moment and let's see um let's see I'm ready lakshmi have you shared the list of uh, guys yes send you on whatsapp navin Okay, one more. We'll start with Satish. Okay, Satish, unmute yourself, buddy. That's my WhatsApp. Let's go to. Thanks, Satish. Yeah. Okay, one moment. Let me bring up my window here. Let's so start. Let's sit back here. Let's just talk. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see. Um, one moment, Satish. Okay. Sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so Sadish, what is the mantra of the list? List is a combination of a values that means uh, it may be a list of uh, array array do you know what is meaning of collection, collection of elements now what now in you know what is meaning of vectorized operation vectorized operation yeah uh, element by element uh, adding in a matrix okay Do you know? Do you remember what does the function lint space do? The equal spacing between uh, the indexes. That means uh, equal spacing. Okay. And let me go to the next one. Um, in Linux, what is VI? It, it's an editor, no? Vim editor. Oh, VI or Vim. If you want to exit, what do you do? What, are the, what is the command? I'm a VI editor, no? If you want to exit, how do you exit out of it? Uh, shift colon WQ. If you want to exit, if you mm -hmm. want to forcefully exit, we will add a uh, Exclamatory mark. Okay. What is a what is Hadoop? Hadoop is a data frame of a big data. What does it do? Framework, I mean, framing of data. Right. What does the framework solve? What I mean, didn't get you. What what is the what is the use of Hadoop? Hadoop. Uh, it will uh, arrange the elements in a sequential order for a easy way way of understanding them. Okay, what is a distributed file system? Yeah, the information which is stored in different servers uh, is known as distributed file system, and which can be accessed multiple servers. Mm, okay. Thank you, Sadesh. Thank you. You can unmute yourself. Let's see who's next here, guys. Next one, Jyotsna, can you come online, please?
It's not. Okay. And let's see what you have here. Okay. What is, how do you define a function? Function is used, it's reduced the lines. We can call it whenever we want. What is the meaning of global scope? We can call that variable outside the function also. Okay. Let's see. Um, Do you remember what is a doc string? Doc string, no, nothing. Okay. Let's see back to here. Do you remember what does the command echo do? It will print the data that exists in the text file. What is the advantage of distributed file system? Efficiency. Hmm. Okay, and let's see. When you give data to Hadoop, what is the first step that it will do? It divides the data into multiple. Friends. Okay, thank you, Jyotsna. Thank you, Navin. Okay, let's see who else is there. Next one, uh, Navya, Navya, you're trading. Please come online. Yes, sir. Um... Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. So let's see. Is it possible to access a local variable in a global scope? Yes, sir. If you want to access, how do you access it? By taking permissions from the global, global variable. Uh, one more time, Navya. Permissions. By giving the permission. Okay. Okay. This is okay. Next, let's see. What does return do? It will return a statement. And when do you need it? Output. It will return an output. Okay, and in what conditions do you return an output? Do you remember in what conditions do we return an output? Okay. okay. And let's see, um, is written used in a global scope or a local scope? Local. And can you tell me why? It is
use uh, written in functions right so that's good This is using functions, okay, good one. And let's see. If you want to find help in Linux world, Linux operating system, what is the command? Help. Okay. Any other command? Man. Okay. Um, let's say we want to put a hundred MB file into Hadoop. We want to load a hundred MB file into Hadoop. What are the steps that uh, that take place? Mapping, shuffling, and reduce. And let's see. What is meaning of replication? Repeating. What is it, Navya? Repeating. Repeating. Okay. What What do we replicate? You don't recall? Okay, thank you, Nabia. Thank you. Next one, let's see, Shyam, can you come online, buddy? Yes, ma'am. See where you are. Okay. And see what you have. How do you cast a string to an integer? Mm -hmm. Iphones by using iPhone. Um, by using what? Hyphen, uh, hyphen, uh, the quotations, hyphen, quotations, double quotation. You want to convert a string into an integer? Type by using semicolons okay what does the function input do uh in uh, give inputs inputs by whom can you repeat it inputs by whom read the values it read the values what is list comprehension a single line command wrote the code in single line what One is the advantage of it uh, advantage uh, one line function like Okay, in Linux, if you Linux. want to go to the parent directory, what is the command? Can you repeat the question? In Linux, if you want to navigate or go to the parent directory, what is the command? Uh, PWD. Or CD. You want to go to present working directory means PWD. Okay. Then we have this one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what does SDR stand for in Hadoop? SDR. 
Yada. Hello. I don't know. What is the split called in Hadoop? Uh, it splits the data. And what do we call uh, the split? Split. Done. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Okay. See what we have. Next one is uh, Priyusha. Are you there? Yes, it's mine. Okay. So where are you? Okay, what is, um, you can, uh, okay. What is the difference between list comprehension and dictionary comprehension? List comprehension is used to write the code in a single uh, line. Okay. Dictionary comprehension? Okay, let's say you have a tray which has Nescafe brew and sunrise and I want you to print all the three cups. How do you print it? Navin, can you repeat once please? You have a tray of three cups, Nescafe, Brew and Sunrise. I want you to print all the three cups. How do you do? I'll just write a print. Print of what? Nescafe, Brew and Sunrise in... Let's in say we want to print individual cups. You want to go to the tray and print them. Or what do you do? We will use quotes. Pardon me? We have the output in three, three lines. Yeah. We use a backslash and for printing in different lines. Use backslash, but you're printing but I want you to print from the tray. I don't want you to hard code it. So the in that case, we use indexing. Indexing? We use uh, print of Z. We, we call indexes with indexes. Do you, how do you get the index? Do you remember what does pass do? Yes or no? Mm, you need to open up your video. You should answer based on what you remember. Without any help, short and sweet. Okay, Priyusha? Okay. Let's, um, let's say, what is slash? What is a slash in uh, Linux? Just a slash. Yeah. It's a root, root directory. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's see. How does Hadoop protect the data? 
how to protect the data by replicating re replicating factor it creates a backup file for everything so okay what is the rack rack is a group group of servers thank you priyusha you can mute yourself next Thank one let's say dhanushvi can you come online yes navi okay let's see what we have for you okay so the same question to you we have a tray of nescafe brew and sunrise and we want to print all the three coffee cups how would you print by using by using what by using the list of the print statement any other way by using print statement we can print those Okay. What does the function length do? Function length uh, indicates the length of the column. Length of the column. What is lambda function? Nameless function. What is the use of it? Ah, uh, prints in a single line. It gives a single line function. Okay. What does the function uh, command uh, cat do? Ah, uh, reads the file. Reads the. Uh, it reads the uh, read and write the and gives output. I'll state that. What is the block in Hadoop? What is? Can you repeat? Block. Um. same book what is the cluster end of the set so cluster yeah uh cluster is nothing but uh, Rack in the place. Ah, uh, customs of the functions block. Customs of functions. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dhanushree. Thank you, Nami. Next, let's see. Is Sai Divi are you there? Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Oh, let's see what we have. And uh, back here. Okay. What is the mantra of a class? Uh, class is a, it. It is a function of member methods and member functions. What is the difference between function and a method? Function is used to uh, uh, is used when we. Uh, Then we have you have you answered it? I didn't hear it. Hello. Yeah, please repeat. Method is nothing but this some particular procedure. whereas uh, function is nothing but when we uh, uh, it runs when we call the uh, when we call it 
A method also is uh, runs when you call it, right? Yes. So what is the difference? Uh, method is a. Uh, uh, method is nothing but uh, which passes the data. Whereas function is nothing but uh, it it uses the parameters inside a function. Okay. What is Whereas in method? It? Yes, Navin. What is in it? In it is a constructor, Navin. Okay. What is the command for creating a directory in Linux? Command for creating a directory in Linux. Uh, vi uh, uh, vi dot uh, uh, mkdir. Okay. Is it vi dot mkdir? No, no, no. mkdir is the directory now. How do you define a cluster? Cluster is a data which 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 stores large amount of the data. What is the difference between rack and cluster? Uh, cluster is a uh, it is a group of racks. I mean, whereas racks it is a small part of the uh, data which is stored. Inside the cluster. Okay. Thank you, Divya. You can mute yourself. Thank you. Same. Lavanya, can you come online? Yes, Navi. Okay. What is the difference between function and method, Lavanya? Method is nothing but it is a object behavior which is within the function. Any other difference? Navin? Any other difference? Differences uh, which is within the local scope method. Okay. Within the constructor. <clears throat> What is the difference between list comprehension and dictionary comprehension? List comprehension is nothing but it creates the dictionary. Okay. What is self? What is self? Self is a self-referencing variable. What is it used for? It is used. Uh, it is used while declaring the attributes within the constructor. Okay. What is the command to remove directory in Linux? Remove. Rm. Do you remember what is rack awareness? What is? Rack awareness. Rack awareness. Yeah. R -E -S -E -K, rack. Awareness. Rack awareness. Rack is nothing but it is a group of uh, servers. Okay. Awareness. Remember what is data locality? Data locality is nothing but uh, data is sitting and uh, pro displacing the code or uh, moving the code. Okay. Thank you, Lavanya. You can mute yourself. Thank you, Navin. Let's see. Um, go to Rahul. Are you there? 
രാഹുൽ മാറിയിടു മാറിയിടുകൊണ്ട് what is special about the keyword self sorry navin hello what is special about the keyword self keyword self uh, it is used to represent an instance or an object okay and it is used to represent an object in given variable self referencing variable okay and how do you define an object define object uh, i don't remember now <clears throat> okay let's see what are some of the attributes that you can think of for a cricket player are you there rahul yes no yes you can put your video on uh it's my personal laptop navin uh it's okay it's okay rahul you can switch on the video no the webcam is not working for my personal laptop all right <laughs> <coughs> what are the different kinds of permissions in linux different kinds of permissions hello i'm yeah. audible now uh read write read write execute okay what is parallel processing it's a process of uh, running more uh, hello yeah it's a process of running uh, two or more servers at a time why do you run two or more servers at one time to handle a uh, few tasks i guess <coughs> what is scalability sorry no what is scalability okay thank you rahul Okay now. Oh, pardon me. 
Hans Fabio, can you come online? <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, Australia. And let's see what we have for you. Okay. Um, why do we use a constructor? A constructor is the main. Um, Main in the program to write. What do we do inside a constructor? For calling for calling the attributes and class Why name and object? class name. Why do we use an object? Object for calling attributes. What are the attributes you can think of for a cricket player? Uh, name, age, cricket player, bat and the ball. Okay. In Linux, what does what is the difference between users and groups? Users and groups. A user can be many groups. Okay. And let's see. Do you remember what does scalability mean? Scalability, no idea. I didn't get your answer. No idea, sir. Oh. Um, let's see. What does commodity computers mean? Computing is nothing but processing. Commodity computer. Okay, thank you, Shravya. You can mute yourself. Thank you, guys. So, gentlemen, ladies, what we'll do? We'll uh, it's almost one twenty. Let's take a break till two, and we'll continue the journey from there. Everybody, okay? Thank you, guys. Lakshmi, I'll send you the results. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thanks. Thanks.
అదే ఒక్కొక్క బ్రాండ్ ఒక రేట్
Okay, guys. Can you give me a quick yes if you're all uh, back, guys? Great, thank you, guys. So let me go ahead and uh, bring up the unions. Next topic. And uh, sharing the screen, guys. Okay. Let's dig a little bit uh, deep into unions and try to understand what they are. This uh, reclaiming host might disrupt uh, breakout options. Screen share reclaim host, take co host, or uh, reclaim host. Um, let's see, Let me make sure on the host here. Where am I? Okay, close this one. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. One moment, guys, just adjusting my window here. Close this one and what do we need here? Okay. Okay, so the union operator is used to combine the result set of two or more select statements. It basically serves to directly concatenate the results of uh, results together, essentially pasting them together. In other words, union is really merging two data sets. It's like putting one on top of the other. We may be getting two results from two selects and we want to merge them horizontally or sometimes maybe vertically. The vertical is what the joints were doing. This is this will do more horizontally, guys, okay? So select column from table one, union, select column from table two. So back to, let's see what we have here. So sales of, uh, sales in the year 2021 for quarter one and for quarter two, we have imagined two different tables. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to, David and Clay, David and Clay, and there it is. We have, we have merged them into one. So basically, you're taking these two and putting below it is what you can think. Quarter one and quarter two have become one of them. Order by name and then on top of it, you can sort it. Order by. So California sales tax laws have changed and we need to alert our customers to this through email. The full auto join more precisely what is happening Pravalika is uh, it is uh, putting the columns together. It is sideways the columns are being joined together. Whereas this is joining the rows together, union. And of course the rows are also joined there in, your, in uh, joins. So, but let's see, what are the emails of the customers uh, who live in California? So we only want those customers who live in California so this is the result, California, Patricia, Betty, Alice, Rosa, and so on, guys, okay? We will need to use the address table from the customer and look at the districts column. So in other words, let's see. <clears throat> Back to PG admin, see where it is. Okay, so I come here, oops. Back to um, figure. Of this one. Okay, we need to start with select, start, start with from address this, say run it, and see what we have. So we have address ID, address, and notice what we have, and let's say district and city ID. We have the city ID. The district is California. There's one of them, which is California. Postal code, phone, last update. <clears throat> so if you come back here, there is California. And what is the hint given to us? We need to use address table and, uh, and customer tables. Look at the district column. So let's also go to the next one. So select. Start from customer. Let's 
So, okay. And this is specifically look for the district column. Looks like we have the email here. This is what we need to get. And uh, there is address ID. So we do have the address ID here. That's it. So the common column between both of them seems to be the address ID. <clears throat> and what are we looking for, guys? If we come back here, we need to use the address on the customer table. Look at the district column. Then here is the expected results. What are the emails of the customers who live in California? Okay, so if we come back here, select start from customer. Let's say start with in a join and we'll join it with address <clears throat> on what is the common column customer dot <clears throat> me. address ID address say so back to PG admin. Store ID and that is address underscore ID. This underscore ID equals to address dot address underscore ID. So, oops, copy this back here. PG admin plus one. <clears throat> so, now we're getting. The emails are there in one place. And if you know, move towards the right hand side, we should be able to find all the guys who are in California. So here's one in California. So now what we could do is the same thing, ladder, filter here, where at get district address dot district equals to, let's say, we can say with equals to. That's uh, California. We can do an exact match, okay? Let's start with say, California. <clears throat> okay, and let's come back here. Let's run it. And now, ideally, we are doing a star here, but we are interested in California. Instead of doing a star, we can say, Email. So run it. These are the emails. Patricia, Betty, Alice, Rosa, Rene. And if you come back here, oops, <clears throat> yeah, here we go. Patricia, Betty, Rosie, Rene, and so on. That is exactly what we have. Everybody with me, guys? Quick yes, please. So back here, that's what we've done. Let's say an example of an inner join. There is a customer join address and we're doing it step by step. As simple as that. A customer walks in, is a huge fan. Oops, bring this up. Is a huge fan of Nick, Nick Wahlberg and wants to know which movies he's in. Get a list of all the movies of Nick Wahlberg he has been in. Nick Wahlberg, Wahlberg has been in. Okay, this is what we want. Expected results. So we want the title. We want the first name and the last name is Nick Wahlberg. These are all the different titles he's in. He's a good hero, guys. He looks a little similar to who's that guy? Uh, Matt Damon, right? So let's say, come back here. Go back here. Nick. Hello. Hmm, what is he? Is this the guy? Oh no, he is. It's actually this guy. But um, I'm not sure that one. <laughs> a little too personal there. Books. See if he's here anyway. It is this guy. It is this guy, folks. Let's see this picture of him. Damn, it's taking time. What is this? What all this? Which is coming like this? Oh, there you go, guys. That's the guy, just in case you're into. Oops, man. Some bad boys there. <clears throat> That's him. 
He's one of my favorites. I like him, guys. That's what I'm looking about. Looking him up. <clears throat> so let's see what we have here. We want title, first name, and last name. I think it is going to be the films table. You will need to do, you will need to do two joints in a row to do this in a single query. You need to do two tables to use actor, film, and film actor. Okay. So let's say come here. Start with select. We'll say to start with star from. Oops. From will put here from actor. I will say in a join we'll join with fill f i l m fill and let's start with this one so here we're looking at uh, two joints but we'll start with one <clears throat> hey oh so sorry we need to figure out what are the common uh, columns here so i think film id is probably this is the actor is actor ID, I see. And if you look at film, film is probably actor ID is going to be the key there. So we have film ID, release, description, rental duration, replication, and where is we should have something like a oh I see. So we don't have the actor here. I think that is there in a separate one. Another one is film underscore actors, which is maintaining. So multiple uh, film underscore actor is where we have an association of both of them. So actor ID and film ID, <clears throat> I see. So we need to get actor ID and film ID from here. Actor ID is an actor stable, film ID is in film stable, guys, okay? So back here, select star from, what is this one? Oops, film actor. Say film underscore actor. So we'll join this one with film. Say on. <coughs> film. And okay, we'll give an alias here so that we don't keep on typing the long names. Say as this is film actor. Film actor. Call this as let's say film on fa dot. Uh, we're joining with film film underscore id equals to f dot film underscore id. So we are figuring out the common columns. Generally, it will take some time. You, you can take your time to understand what are the common columns and things like that because I'm familiar with this one. I'm quickly typing in here. So what do we have? We have all the columns from both these things. And it includes the film ID, description, the title. And let's see, but we don't have the first name and the last name. So now what we'll do, <clears throat> we will join this one, inner join on, and then say inner join actor, actor as a on fa dot actor underscore ID equals to a dot actor underscore id. Cool. So this will give you everything. So we're joining two tables. So three tables here. So run it. This is star. So what do we want? We want the title is Academy Dinosaur. And if you scroll special features, first name Penelope Guinness. But what we want is we want just Nick Wahlberg. So what we can do Yes, we'll say where what's his name? First underscore name. First, and this one is probably coming from actor A dot first underscore name equals to Nick. <clears throat> Nick, let's say and a dot last underscore. Name equals to Wahlberg, W A H L B E R G, Berg. Cool. Copy this. So run. And 
let's see what we have here. 225 hours. Hmm, that's some good number of movies there. Oh, sorry, we, we just found the title. So here is the title. Did he really act in all these things? That's a lot of movies. I didn't know he acted in so many movies. Very, very good actor, guys. Dracula, mm, Crystal, Flight, Jawbreaker, Indian Law. Mm, interesting. Okay. Everybody with me, guys? Speak yes, please. So instead of two, we are joining three of them. And more precisely, um, <clears throat> what did we do? When you join two of them, the result is a new table. So from the result, when you join it with the third table, again, you need to conceptualize your joining two tables. The concept is same. Whether it is two tables, three tables, five tables, or 10 tables, you take from two, and that will become one. And that is being joined to the next one. That will become one. And that is being joined to the next one. That's all. That's how it keeps on going. That is something we need to, uh, we will, we need to practice and we need to get, uh, get it, uh, um, get it, guys. Okay. So there it is, film and actor. That's it. Okay, guys. That's a little bit of SQL. A few concepts, foreign keys, and things like that. Now, how to design a database? We'll uh, probably talk in coming up days, guys. Hmm? Back to a little bit of big data. Let's see where we are. Yeah. Back to a little bit of five. Okay. So let's see. This high. Okay, so Hive is a data warehouse software facilitates querying and managing large data sets residing in distributed storage. <clears throat> when we're talking about distributed storage, we're talking about Hadoop. Okay, and what is it? It's a data warehouse. But the question is, what is data warehouse? Okay, you can think of data warehouse something like this. Imagine a large business or an enterprise inside a large business or an enterprise. You have different kinds of applications. So let's say I start with here is a HR application. And let's say here is a marketing application. And let's say here is another application all this is maybe sales application or a customer application. Traditionally, what will happen in enterprises is every application will have its own database. So I choose this one. This is another database. And let's say, choose this one. This is another database. And so on. Okay, so what happens is from applications, you generally save the data your own database to their respective database. And generally the data in the HR database is not visible to the marketing, the, uh, the one in sales is not visible to the marketing and vice versa <clears throat> is what happens, guys, okay? Now, what is a data warehouse? You can kind of think of data warehouse is like a super database. Generally what they do is in a traditional database, we save the data and we modify it, you update it, you delete it, you rows like that. But in the, in the world of data warehouse, what you do is you, you take the data from multiple databases, you try to save it into a super database, that is what is called data warehouse. What do you do? You try to run the reports. So you try to run the reports. And what do you get when you run, try to run the reports? The business will try to find or understand insights. Based on insights, you try to make decisions. This is generally the process, guys, okay? So what is data warehouse? You can think of it like a, and, uh, like a super database for the sake of simplicity. Now, let's go a little bit deep. Tools to enable easy data extraction, transform, and load. In other words, ETL, 
<clears throat> what is ETL is traditionally or generally what they do is they take the data from a database, they extract the data and they try to save it into this form. So you are extracting the data. At the time of extracting the data, we will try to make sm small changes, minor changes, and we will try to save it into it, which is called loading. This process is referred as ETL, extract, transform, and load. In the world of data warehousing, what, and this is what we'll do in a bit, uh, in, in, in our labs and things like that, guys, okay? We try to extract, transform, and load the data. What are we doing? We are extracting the data from multiple databases. We are making minor changes, whatever is the changes based on our requirements, that is called transformation. Then we are saving into a super database called data warehouse. That is what is called loading into the data warehouse. Everybody with me, guys. Quick yes, please. <clears throat> it is a mechanism to impose structure on a very data for the formats. So coming to Hive, what is Hive? Hive is a super data warehouse. It is not just a simple data warehouse, but it is a super data warehouse. It is enterprise data warehouse. The advantage is it is cheap. And what is it doing? Generally, when we have, if you remember the commands of Hadoop, Hadoop FS put Hadoop FS copy, what are we doing? We are, we are loading the data into Hadoop. <clears throat> when we load the data into Hadoop, they are unstructured data. We've been working with unstructured data, but we can, transform this unstructured data okay, into structured data. If you can convert it into structured data, the structured data is nothing but the tables. More precisely, these are the big data tables or big tables. And what can we do? If you can get the data into the tables, we can start writing SQL commands, the same commands that we have been looking into and practicing. We can write it using Hive. Hive is nothing but SQL of Hadoop, is what it is. So what are we doing? We are imposing a structure to data means, we are taking unstructured data, we are converting it to table. What is that? That is what Hive will do. How? We'll try to understand that. Access to the file stored either directly in Apache HDFS in other data storage systems such as HBS means, Hive is making it easy. If the data is there in Hadoop, which is HDFS or HBS, which is an OSQL, we'll talk in the coming up days, it is not easy to work with them. Just a simple process of reading, processing, analyzing is not easy. It is very difficult. It is, it is complex. That is what is distributed processing. It is super complex. It is rocket science. Hive is making it simple and easy. Query execution via MapReduce. What does Hive do? Hive will take simple SQL-like commands as input. Internally, it will convert it to Java MapReduce programs. How we'll see that? So what are we doing? Whatever SQL we have seen, whatever SQL we have learned so far is nothing but the exact same commands we'll use in Hive. And this time what is happening is a database or a data warehouse is generally a single server. But Hive, what is it? Hive sits on top of Hadoop, which means your database or data warehouse can be, can be as big as 10 servers, 100 or 1000 servers. What do you do? You give SQL commands and you try to work with it. It is designed to enable easy data summarization, ad hoc querying, and analysis. This is nothing but distributed processing. Everybody with me, guys. Quick yes, please. <clears throat> so some of the generally, uh, there are multiple use cases we can use Hive for, for processing log files. We take all the log files. And as I said, we can convert them into tables and you start issuing SQL commands. Text mining, the world of machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing. This is the buzzword and the big things, which is going around the world document indexing, business intelligence, predictive modeling, hypothesis testing, this is nothing but the artificial intelligence. All these are nothing but part of the artificial intelligence. Uh, that's where we can use Hive for. Uh, Hive architecture, going a little bit deep, short and sweet, Hive is sitting on top of Hadoop. What is Hadoop? Hadoop is brain and heart. HDFS is brain, map reduces heart. What do we do? In our brain, we store thoughts, thoughts is the data. What do we do? We analyze. How do you analyze? You use the heart to analyze the thoughts in your brain. We uh, analyze the data in HDFS using MapReduce. But MapReduce is complex and super complex. You need to be, we need to be an expert in Java. We need to be expert in MapReduce that is complex. What do we do? That's where Hive comes in. Again, Hive is an enterprise data warehouse. 
what it is doing is it is hiding Java MapReduce from you. You don't need to be a Java expert. You don't need to be a MapReduce expert. You learn SQL and using SQL, you give it to Hive. Hive is internally converting it to Java MapReduce. Internally, what Hive is doing is we can work with Hive in command line interface, which is what we'll do. We can also use the web interface. That's what the hue thing is. We can also connect to Hive using REST APIs, using Thrift Server and all these things, but that is at this stage not. Um, we don't need to worry about them, guys. That's in certain uh, slide in advanced uh, stages and things like that. And then there is a component called Metastore. Hive internally maintains its own metadata in its own database called Metastore. <clears throat> and we'll also try to understand that in a bit. The driver, the compiler optimizer, this is where the SQL is getting converted to Java MapReduce programs. Just have a high level idea. So HDFS is the brain, MapReduce is the heart, Hive is one of one of the eyes of Hadoop. So Metastore store system catalog, all the metadata, the metadata is what is your table name, what are the data types, all this is called metadata. Hive is internally storing in a separate database internally that is called Metastore. It has a driver, it has a compiler. The execution engine is converting the SQL to Java MapReduce. These are the other ways we can log into Hive, which is what we'll see. So in Hive, which is, it is a data warehouse, a data warehouse is a group of databases. A database is a group of tables. A table can be a group of partitions. A partition can be a group of buckets. These are advanced concepts that we'll try to understand in the coming up days. Everybody with me? Quick yes, please. I'm just giving you a touch of them here. Hmm? What can you do? You can filter, you can select, you can do joins, you can perform aggregation operations. You can store the data, you can download the data. You can create managed and external tables. That is what we have been. 70 to 80 percent of these things we have been uh, doing this in SQL. The remaining thing we will do using Hive. Okay, some major difference between SQL and HiveQL. More precisely, SQL here is a database. HiveQL here is nothing but Hive. Hive is nothing but 95 to 99 percent SQL with some minor differences in the form of syntax. So almost SQL is nothing but Hive, guys. Okay, some minor differences are there. So updates. So generally, SQL databases are used for updating, inserting, and delete. In Hive, generally, we don't delete. If you want, you can really update it. It is possible there are ways and techniques. But generally, uh, we insert the big data. We leave it there. You don't update it. You just append it. That is, that is what it is for. SQL databases are, are used for transactions, whereas Hive is not for transactions. Hive is for analyzing the transactions. Okay, indexes. Again, we um, for faster performance in, a, in SQL, they create indexes. In Hive, again, in the latest versions, they have indexes. Indexes is um, the partitions and things like that, which we'll see for faster performance. Uh, SQL databases store small amounts of data. When you retrieve the data, you get the data in a few seconds. In Hive, they can be seconds, they can be minutes, they can be hours. Why? We work with big data. Both of them, you can have different kinds of data types. You have built-in functions. We can write our own functions. Uh, there is something called create table as select, which is what we'll see. We can write different kinds of select uh, queries that we have seen. And there are joins, there are unions that we just discussed. Subqueries is writing a query inside a query. Then we just didn't discuss about POS, but we'll see. They're also like SQL commands. Extension points is user-defined function, just a high level academic overview here, guys. We'll, we'll actually execute these things and we'll try to understand that. Mm -hmm. Then comes the data types, different kinds of data types. Tiny int, small int, int. These are nothing but big int. These are nothing but integers. They have given, for optimization reasons, they have given tiny int, small int, which is have less bytes, but we don't need to go that far. We are generally at high level. You can create an int or a big int if it's a very, very big number. Float and double is nothing but float, which is nothing but decimals. Boolean. The twos and false strings is text, binary is video and audio, or, uh, audio, that kind of data. Timestamp is date and time. We can also have complex data structures, which is what we'll try to understand. Okay, so data storage warehouse. So tables are stored in tables. These are more precisely big tables, big data tables. Okay, uh, partitions and buckets, advanced tables. We'll see. Um, the actual data is in the file. The data which is in a file, which is a big data file, we will talk to it as if it is a table. 
which means Hive is simplifying the communication for us. And we have sequence files. We can take a flat file, we can convert it into a sequence file. It will take less storage. It is a binary format, but then we'll get a higher performance. Then we have surdays, serializers and deserializers. We can create these data tables or objects or tables as objects and save it to file as survey objects. Okay, which is serializers and deserializers. That is also probably something I will show you rather than explaining you guys, okay? So before we go that far, let's see, back to our cloud. So where is it? Big user. Cloud Labs. <clears throat> Oops, we'll go back. Oh, there you go. One thing is fine. Okay, back to Vula. And what should we do? We can go into the Hue portal, but we'll, we'll go there later. Generally, most of the time, more than giving a Hue portal, they'll give you access to the command line. This is the command line. So let's say you can log into your okay, three, two, one. Sit on it and just type in hi. <clears throat> okay, so back here, and let's say these are the SQL commands, right? Say back here, dvd3 Hadoop commands, let's say is Hadoop commands. So we'll go into, just type in hype, you get into hype. And what is hive? This is like SQL. Instead of SQL, it is saying hive. So to start with, we'll say show data basis. You need to put a semicolon. Show tables, put a semicolon. So start with show databases. Hive is a data warehouse, which is nothing but it is a group of databases. Control Shift V, enter. If you don't give semicolon, it will wait for you to give a semicolon. So these are all the databases which they have already built earlier. Looks like lots of guys are building their databases and things like that. So that'll probably, okay. The next one is show tables. Now notice if I just press enter, it is waiting. You have to enter a semicolon is a must here. You can directly create a lot of, a lot of tables are already created. By default, it uses a default database. Okay. so. Um, here is use. Okay, so what we'll do, let me go ahead and uh, stop my screen here for one moment. Let me bring up my hive commands. Put a bunch of them open. I need to just see which one it is. Scalar. Close this one. Here is hive. URL cat. Order by limit. It's dynamic partitions. <clears throat> Okay, we can start here. I'm gonna copy these things and uh, back to which one? Command sort of, let's say file, this in files, commands, short tables. And I'll put this here. Let's save this one. Back to sharing. <clears throat> Here we go. So share it, bring this up. Your commands. Yeah, okay. So we logged into Hive, we did show databases, data basis, then we did show tables. Looks like these were, I think these were from yesterday. Hive sample DB, okay. I was just making a note of them. Okay, this is not required for us. This is just comments. Okay, so let's see <clears throat> what we'll do guys. 
Now, let's head back here. What we'll do, we'll, we'll say quit first. So we just got into Hive. Let me come back here, show tables, and then we'll quit Hive. And notice we are back to the dollar prompt, the command prompt, which is Linux prompt. Okay, so let's say clear and say which Hive. This is where Hive is executing. Say where is Hive, etc Hive. So two commands, which Hive is telling you where it is located from where the executable, the shell is getting executed. And here is where is Hive, another Linux command. These two are Linux command. So from this, if you notice slash etc slash Hive, that is where Hive is configured. So what we'll do, we'll say cd slash etc slash Hive. So say, say cd slash etc slash Hive. Oops. And bring up the chat window. And this here. Okay. So now pwd by now, hopefully you're comfortable. ls, ls. So there's a configuration directory here, ls hyphen l. Notice conf is a, this is a link. Notice here, this is a link. Link means a symbolic link. What it means is when you say ls, it looks like conf is a directory here. Notice the color of it, slightly light blue. It is actually pointing to this particular directory. This is what is called a symbolic link. So actually Hive, the, the root administrator installed it at a different location, but it, it makes it look like it is there. That's for security reasons and other things like that, which is again, not bad or nothing like um, bad or anything like that. But let's say, we'll say CD conf and say ls. Now notice here, there are there is one or two files we just need to be aware of again, the core site.xml, Hive ENV, map it site, these are the things that we discussed yesterday. But here is Hive ENV and Hive site.xml. This is probably what we may want to look at. Let's say cat hive hyphen site.xml. Let's run it. Let's go to, and these are all the Hive configurations. Say so go back here. Hmm. So this is IP address. And we are looking, notice, here is Hive Metastore. So this is the Metastore warehouse directory, which means, let's say, okay. So user Hive warehouse. Let's say, clear this one. Now back to Hadoop. If you remember, Hadoop FS LS says nothing but, it's giving you a list of files. These were the files which that we saved yesterday. Room two, room three, room four, room five. Everybody able to recall? Quick yes, please. Are you able to recall these uh, files from yesterday? Uh, files and directories. Okay, but let's say now take a look at this. We'll say Hadoop FSLS. Now notice I'll say slash. Okay, when you say ls, it gives you these files. When you say slash, notice. Okay, notice it gives you some other files. So in other words, cd etc hive, then we looked at cd conf, then we looked at cat hive hyphen site dot xml. Then we are looking at hmm, back to Hadoop fs hyphen ls looked at, then here is ls slash. What is slash? Slash is the root of Hadoop. If you just say ls slash, that is a root, that is like your my computer of a single computer. But when you say Hadoop ls slash, you're looking at the my computer of a bunch of computers, a group of computers, which is a distributed file system. Remember, another shortcut is Hadoop is acting like a desktop for multiple computers. Okay, imagine we save a shortcut of a file to our desktop, in our desktop, that file does not really exist. It looks like that the file is existing in desktop. So if you make a change, the actual change is getting reflected in another directory where it is located, but it looks like the, uh, we are making a change to that uh, file. Everybody understand what I'm saying is, can you give me a quick yes? Do you understand desktop? Do you understand when I say, uh, when there's a shortcut in a desktop uh, that is actually pointing to a different location, do you understand that part of it? Deep. 
Okay, so let's say here is a computer. What is a desktop? Think of a desktop is here. <clears throat> let's say we have, let's choose this one, a C drive here. And let's say there is a D drive here. And let's say there is a file here. Okay, what did we do? We created a shortcut of this file in desktop. So if you look at that shortcut, it looks like the file is here. Okay, but where is the file? That file is actually located in your C drive. <clears throat> Let's say you make a change to that file. Oops. You change that file. So what is happening? It looks like that file is getting changed in desktop, but really the change is happening in the original file. So what is this desktop? This desktop is Hadoop. So more precisely, the Hadoop is acting like a desktop. It is called a virtual layer. All your files which are shortcut into desktop, they are acting like a virtual layer. You make the change, it's actually made, the change is being made in the C directory files. Are you able to understand that Pratyusha? Okay, so now what is root? Root is your my computer. In my computer, you have C drive, you have E drive, you can have multiple directories. This is for the computer. Similarly, what's happening? Your Hadoop is also indirectly maintaining a root under which it is maintaining all its files that you create. But what do you do? You don't worry about it, leave it to Hadoop. Okay, just like a Linux computer, so I come here, we also have a root here. Under the root, there are different kinds of directories and files we are saving. That is what this is. So here we have Hedgebase, Markov Data, Solar, User, and, and things like that. Out of H, User, Solar, these are, I'm sorry, User and Temp, the, and of course, Hedgebase is also important, but these two are, are the ones that we mostly work with. Okay, so now notice this. Say LS slash user, notice what happens. Notice these are all the users. Big Data Lab 1. Looks like they have hundreds and hundreds of users. What are these? These are different kinds of directories here. Oh, that's a bunch of them. Rupendra. Sneha, Saigopia, Scolopia. These are hundreds and hundreds of directories. Okay, starting from slash user, whoever that guys, there is Arti, there is ABC, and uh, there is Abhi, Abhijit, Abhin, Vigar. And if you scroll all the way down, we have Zavarsha, Yuraj, and so on. What are these things? Now here, take a look at this. Say user slash big star, let's say, these are all, let's see if it brings up all the big users. Big data, these are all, again, there are some users whose usernames are big data as well. 3,200, really. That's a bunch of them. Here comes big user. So take a look at this. What is it? Let's say I don't want all those things. I want, let's say, all those big user stars. FSLS, we have big user one. Hmm. Looks like I'm the only one. Aren't you guys big user one? What are, what are your usernames, guys? Hmm. Okay. Have any one of you, uh, one of you give me your username? Big data users. Your big data user. Huh? Big data user 120. Big data, say user. So these are big data users. So what are these? These are the, um, um, looks like some of you guys have already created your, you know, good. You created, you practiced it. 
your folders are there, your files are there, your structures. So whatever you're doing in Hadoop, what is happening is, what we are doing using Hadoop commands, Hadoop is storing it on HDFS. And what is this? This is a complete snapshot of the HDFS. We're looking at complete HDFS like that, like this, just like we looked at the Linux uh, box. Okay, but let's clear it. And let's say PWD, we are in here. Let's say CD, PWD, we'll go back to our user. And now we'll say Hadoop FS hyphen ls slash. When I, when I say slash, gives you these. When I say slash user, and uh, take a look at this, slash hive. So what happens is, under hive, there will be a few directories. If you start with a slash hive, slash you, I mean, fs slash, this is called absolute path. If I don't give this slash here, and I just say ls, notice, this is called relative path. What hive is doing is, what Hadoop is doing is, it is looking at my username. This is what I'm logged in as. So by default, whatever is under slash user, slash big user one, which is the same thing. Come here. Oops, one more time. Click on this. Slash user slash big user one. Notice the output will be same. Exactly the same files, exactly the same files. If you just say ls, it sees what is your username. This is called relative path. And what is it doing? It is using this indirectly here. If you give this one slash user, this is full path. The full path is called absolute path. Everybody understanding the difference, guys. If you generally, what we do is, I don't, I, we are not, we are too busy. We don't, we are not really worried about what others have in others' directories and folders once you get into the projects. You're busy with your own stuff. You don't even have to go other way. You will generally look, so what you do, you will use your relative path. Okay, so now let's say here is a directory room to H. So take a look at this. Let's say we'll give, click on this one. Big user, ls slash uh, room to underscore Hadoop. This is it. There are there is uh, there are two files here. The same thing. I can also give slash room two underscore h. This is the full path of the absolute path. You generally give absolute path if you're looking at somebody else's thing. If you want to see what is inside you, you just give the relative path. You don't have to give the full path of the absolute path. Quickest place. Okay. So. Let's say clear this one. Let's get back into Hive. <clears throat> Give it a moment. Starting the Hive shell. And this is the command line interface. Most of the time we'll be working with command line interface in the world of big data, the cloud computing and things like that, guys. Um, so that, that's a very common one. So let's see, back to our commands. Okay. Now what we'll do is, we need to find our demographic data. So let's say, here, here is what we have. Hmm. We're in Hive. What we'll do? So let's get back into Hive. Then say exclamation Hadoop fs hyphen ls semicolon. Now notice this one. If you're in a Hive prompt, paste it, run this one. This is going to run a Linux command. This is a hive prompt, it's running a Linux command. What is it? You put an exclamation. Semicolon is for hive requires that from a syntax purpose, but in hive prompt also we can run Linux commands. Are you all catching it guys? So take a look at this. Exclamation ls semicolon is nothing but running ls in that particular directory. So for your thing, I'll say exclamation ls semicolon. That's like running ls without getting into hive which means in Hive also we can run Linux commands. It's not a great thing, but it's just a slight convenience. Let's see if clear works here. Hmm. It looks like it is working. And let's see, this is high. Okay, also, okay, take a look at this. Show history, semicolon. Oh, sorry. So looks like they don't have, uh, they're either not showing or maybe the history command is not there. 
But let's say exclamation clear one more time. Okay, and let's say type help. Hmm. Sorry. Hmm. See if that brings up. It's an exclamation. Hmm. It's just taking me to high prone. So nothing much there. Okay, we can, again, it's giving Hadoop home, Hadoop. These are called the environment variables at the time of the administrator installing. He will set up the Hadoop home where Hadoop is installed, where Hive is installed. And sometimes they want to run uh, run these things and so on. That's when they will be used as. But for us, let's come back here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just give you an example. So we have a file, exclamation ls, one more time. There is demographic data. And what we'll do, we'll say exclamation cat demo true.csv. Okay, it's the same thing. Um, clear. Say exclamation ls hyphen ltr. Let's see if this works. And what I want is I want a small file. There is data, there is users. Okay, for the sake of simplicity, let me create a file like this. We'll say vi user post.txt. So what we'll do, exit one more time. Say vi, I can paste this here. So run it, user post. And now what I'll say, I'm going to user one, message one, some timestamp, Linux timestamp. So an example of a, let's say, what is the control shift frame? User one, message one, go here, come here. And what we'll say, escape, append, press center, escape, delete this one, then move here, come here. Escape and insert the center and escape X is a four. So escape and let's say okay, escape, insert, enter, escape X for deleting character, come to the end, escape. X, delete that. Okay, just make me sure. Move to the right. Okay, now I'm going to save this. Write and quit. And if you say ls ltr, there is user post, a small file. So if I come back here, we did vi user post and we saved this data into this one. And now what we'll do is this is a file on local file system. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and save this file in um, drop table messages and posts. Okay. We need to put this. See if I'm putting it into high. Okay. We can also do local. Okay. I don't need to do. We, you guys don't need to do. Let's say I'll comment this one. Comment this one. Comment this one. We'll create a database. Say, Comment this one, comment this one. Let's just, we'll use them later. So VI is step one, we added this data. Now we'll create a database called, let's say, well, what is it? Uh, rather than test one, test one underscore big user one, be one, okay? Copy this. For this one, again, after you do a VI, get back into Hive. Sir, how to come out from Hive, sir? Exit semicolon or quit semicolon. Okay. Now let me paste this. Create database test one underscore BU. After this one, we will say 
copy this. Oh, sorry, here it is. Use test from underscore BU, which means we are going into that particular database. Then we'll say show tables now. It will just say okay. What is the meaning of okay? Okay means it's just saying, hey, it executed fine, but it is not giving us a list of any tables, which means there are not tables in our Hive database. Now, what we'll do, we'll say first drop table messages. Drop means deleting a table. Even though the table is not there, just for sake of simplicity, we'll drop it. Now take a look at this. We'll create a table called messages. In this message, the first one is username. So we're going to call this as the column name, and we're going to give it a string, which is our string, which is nothing but textual data, the data type. The second column is post. Somebody posted message one, somebody posted message two, message three, message four. Ideally in a big data file, you'll have millions and billions of rows <coughs> like that. <coughs> but um, it is independent of the size of the data. The last one is time begin. That's a long number, large number. This is Linux timestamp. It is nothing but the number of seconds. At any point of time, what Linux does is it is calculating the number of seconds from 1971, January one. That's a big number, so we still save it as begin. So what we are doing, as the name suggests, this is how we create a table. We work, we've been working so far with already created tables, but this is how we create a table. In Hive, in SQL, this part of it may not be necessary, but in Hive, this is also required where we say raw formatted delimited fields separated by comma. What is comma? Notice our data here is separated by comma. We're telling, hey, my fields, my columns are separated by comma, is what that means. And it is stored as a text file means it's a text file. Okay, so now we'll say, we'll run this one. Cannot recognize input near user string. See what you get. User creative messages use a string. Okay, interesting. What is it saying? Cannot recognize string. Hmm. Could it be possible? That's uh, interesting. Let's say we this is here creative messages users of the string. String. Say big in it. User and string. String. In column name or primary or foreign key. Hmm, interesting. It's already getting there. Primary in column name or primary foreign key. I don't even need to worry about the primary or the foreign key here. So, limited, no viable alt exception. Strange. Okay. Let me see. I will copy this one. Copy this. And say, Insert. And let's say go into process for one moment. Come here, back here, back here. Say for this. Back here, resume it. Okay, let's see what is happening. It cannot recognize near end string, parse exception. So here is a Clauder as a distribution that we are using right now. We'll also look at their answers and let's see. Database colon string. Hmm. I think, what am I doing here? User, oh, user string. User is a column name. I think it's complaining about this space. Maybe they changed it to colon. 
in the latest version. Let's see what that means. Create external table. And uh, CAD, no, it looks like they have that one. CAD space string, category string. Create external table, okay. External table string. Table properties. Insert into table, okay. That's inserting. Let's see, back here. Let's see what else is there. So create external table and yes, he has a column name and looks like the only thing is they're specifying a, this one, this quote here. That's the only thing I can think of. Maybe that is what is added here. Insert into in bash. Okay. So let me see if I come back here, we will put this one here, put this one here. Post here, post here. Let's just say time. Say begin. So I copy this one back to high. There you go. Looks like we need to give the codes. Uh, that's not a code, that's a tick. It is um, on the left hand side of the key one uh, or the below tilde. And that's what it is, guys. Okay. And let's see, so now we created the table. If you say show tables, notice you have a table called messages. So let's come back here. We created this table. We say show table. Next, describe messages. This will give us the metadata. So here is describe messages. So what is metadata? The column user is a string data type. Post is a string data type. The time is a begin. So now what we are doing, this is called, uh, this is like a structured data, a table which uh, knows the data types and that is called schema. And here is something slightly advanced. Maybe you guys don't have to worry about it. Describe extended messages gives you much more detailed metadata. It is same as, okay, describe formatted messages. Describe formatted messages. So formatted means it is giving you whatever is the information here, which is in the form of a single line, it's separating. This is the basic metadata. Here is the database it belongs to. This table belongs to this database. Big user one is the owner. This is at the time at which we created last access time. And now notice here something is important. If you look at this one, slash user, this is where the my computer is. Under my computer, there is user under Hive, under warehouse, under this one. If you take a look at this one, this is where Hive is going to create this table or it is going to point to this table. When we create a table in Hive, it has created a folder or a directory in HDFS. So let me copy this one. This is one thing which is important. Another thing is manage table. Okay, so let's say come here. Now, exclamation, Hadoop fs hyphen ls paste it semicolon so if you look here messages nothing is there or in other words bring up the same thing take out this one what is this one test one underscore big user one if i say ls this notice now you will find messages here give it a moment there is a directory called messages so what is happening? We created a database called this one, test1 underscore bu1. It created a folder. We created a table called messages. It created a table called messages. Everybody with me? Quick uh, folder called messages. Everybody with me? Quick yes, please. Okay, so this is where we said exclamation Hadoop fs hyphen ls and paste it here. That's what we did. Next, we looked at this one is what it is. So more precisely, this is the, when you create a database, we can put it here. When you create a database, notice we created this one. 
And when you created a table, what's happening is it created. So here is show tables, it created this one. And how do you know? This is what, when you say format, formatted messages, this is nothing but the metadata. Metadata of five. What is this one? This part of his is, is what is called metadata. All this metadata, Hive is saving separately in its own database, is what is happening. Okay, so now what we'll do, let's say back here, you say select star from messages. Notice what we did is we created a table, it is empty, we did not add any data into this form. What we need to do is we need to add data into this form. What do we do? That's where we will say local data, load data, local impact. Load data means Hadoop FS put. In Hive, we are saying load data. Local impact means from local file system. What do we have? We have a file called user-post.txt. That is what we just created. I think that is one. Yes, user hyphen post dot txt. Overwrite it into messages. So let me run this one. This is a hive's way of saying put. Okay, so it says okay, which means it loaded. What does that mean? If you now say select star from messages, notice we are getting the data. What happens? A file is now acting like a table. What did we do? We created a table, we loaded the data, and then we are looking at it. You first uh, load the data, then you try to read the data, you analyze the data, you try to process the data. Everybody with me so far? Quick yes, please. So coming back here, where did we create the data? Here. We created the table. Then this is the step where we are loading the data. Before we loaded the data, what did we do? we manually created a file called user post txt. What is load data? Load data is nothing but Hive's way of mm -hmm. saying Hadoop FS put. What is this local? From local file system, you're giving the path of that in the local file system, you say overwrite into messages. That is what is loading the data. Now, another one, because we loaded the data, if you come back here one more time, load the data, we did select star from, put this here. Now, if you look at messages, one more time, notice, we are seeing under our database, there is a folder called messages that we have seen earlier. It has now stored user post.txt. A user post.txt is a file which it has copied from the ground floor, which is the local file system and pasted it there in the HDFS. This is where it pasted it. So what is load data doing? It is doing a Hadoop FS put. Everybody catching it guys, quick yes please. And what is the advantage of that? Now we are able to write simple SQL commands. Now we can write simple SQL commands. One more time, say select star from messages. And now the tax like a table. One is user, another one is message, another one is timestamp. Let's say we want all the messages of user one. Let's say that is a popular guy. User equals to an expression, cannot recognize input near user. What's happening? Oh, I think they're changing this one, the single quote. This is more of a, oops, one more time. Oh, bring this up, go here, say backspace. You put a tick here, move it here, put a tick here. Now take a look at, what's that? Cannot recognize, user equals to user one. Say express specification, let's say copy that one. Come back here. Sit here. Pass, 
or six exception. Strange. Input near in statement. Create table or select, okay. Let's string a select there. Where user equals to user one. That's true problem. So there somebody is creating a table. Location, they're directly giving the location, okay. Select household. Uh, by household. So I mean, Google is generally your good friend, should be able to, so let me say, come here. Say hi. Type QL, select red, let's see what they have here. You can also go to this website and manually try to read a little bit. So select all distinct, we have seen this one. Select star where salary is greater than. This is a Java program. You don't need to worry about this, but let me see. It is strange. Let me come back here. <clears throat> back to our thing where user equals to user one. Okay. I will copy this one. Paste this here. So say we user like percent user one percent. Let's see this chance. It's an exact match and click on this. Run it. Input near user. What could be going wrong here? Where user equals to user one. Oh, could it be possible? I mean, let me try this one, guys. Say where on oh, this one. The tick here, where is a tick? Is a tick. User equals to, let's say, user one. Let's see if this runs. Oh, there you go. So they made these changes in the latest runs in version 3.0. Okay. So notice now what is happening is it looks like something is running. What is happening? This is where it is taking our SQL command. It is converting it into Java map reduce. In other words, a complex process is being run behind the scenes. That is what it is giving. Behind the scenes, when you run a map reduce, it is running, it is nothing but it is doing the, uh, what we discussed in our, uh, um, in our, uh, what we say, in our library yesterday, library puzzle. It is performing the map, it is performing the shuffle, it is performing the reduce. Everything it converts it into map reduce. So everything in the world of Hadoop, you need to think in terms of MapReduce, that's a little bit of complexity. But as a Hive developer, you don't worry about that. You leave that to Hive. You give SQL commands. What's happening? Well, there is one user whose username is user1. So let's say I will copy this one. Come back here. Hmm, I already have that. So everywhere when we are referring, to the column names. So now if you say your user like user one or user, come here, paste it, run it. So it takes a few seconds to a few minutes and there's a little bit of delay here in the world of big data. Generally this, this delay is accepted. Behind the scenes, it is talking to the name node, the resource manager, that's what it is indicating. It is emitting out this information. It's logging out this information. We don't need to worry about it. We can also click on, let me click on this one. See if it will allow me to access it. I don't think they will allow us to access it directly. So there it is. What did we do? We have given this one. Give me select star from messages where user like percent user. So we have user one, two, three, four, five. We are matching for user. That's why we got all the four rows. What are we doing? We're doing filtering. Everybody catching it, guys? So what are you doing? Ideally, you're just running SQL commands. What it does behind the scenes, you don't really worry about that. You leave it to hide. It is hiding from you. But what you do? You be familiar with SQL commands. What is it? Now, we're able to work with big data. 
even if this is a data file which is sitting on 10, 100 or 1000 computers, you give SQL commands and SQL commands are working on hundreds and thousands of computers getting the data, the filters and things like that. You may think that might be something simple, but that is very, very big thing. That is very, very useful and helpful in a real world. Simple operations in the world of big data, uh, when you have uh, data sitting in multiple computers get very difficult and Hive and Hadoop have made it very, very simple and easy. Catching the point, guys. Quick yes, please. Okay, so that is a filter. User equals user. Now, notice this, guys. We'll repeat the process. This time, we'll create table messages to the same thing. Just give the user. And here is the post. And here is the time. We're repeating this. No change for the sake of simplicity. And now what we'll do, okay. So first we'll create this table, repeating the same process. Oops. Create the, then say, if you say show tables, we have messages too. So let's say after this, say show tables. We did this. Now if you say select, Start from messages to semicolon. Notice you won't get anything. You'll just say, okay, because we have to load the data. What do you do? You do load data. Local in path is what we have some done. Now what we'll do is we'll do something different. We'll say Hadoop FS put user post or txt. What we'll do is this user post or txt. We will say, we will, we will do a put manually into HDFS. Earlier, we did load data local. Okay, earlier what we've done is, we said, copy this and we say, load data local. We didn't give in path. Load data local and we said, user hyphen post. So this is doing Hadoop FS put local means, it is copying this file from the ground floor and pasting it into the first floor. If you say load data in path, you don't give that local, but you give in path. You are telling Hadoop, there is a file called post.txt in the first floor. It will cut this one, cut this file and paste it here. What is it, buddy? Ganesh, what is ATV? I mean, actually, four by four pm, we have one session is there, Naveen. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I will, uh, I will wrap up in five minutes. About five of them, I will uh, take another quick viva, and then I'll leave you in a few minutes so that you'll get a little time for break and you can prepare for your thing. Okay. Okay. Naveen. What is the TV buddy? Okay, so take a look at this. So now what we are doing is, we will run this one. So this is going to copy it, paste it in the first floor as post.txt. I need to give a semicolon here. And instead of saying load data local, we are directly saying load data in path. Copy this from this one. Give it a moment and now we'll repeat this. Select star from messages to okay. So if you now say messages to, you're getting the data. So in other words, there are two ways of loading the data. You can load the data into a table from a file which is in the ground floor. If you have the file in the first floor, you just say load data in path, not the local. You just remove that local. Hmm. Local in path. Instead of local in path, you're saying in path. In path means it is going to look, look for this file in the first floor, not in the ground floor. Everybody catching it, guys? Quick yes, please. I'm almost. So now take a look at this, print, 
header equals to true, this is a property. What we'll do, we'll say select star from messages to, so if you compare, when we gave messages to, it did not give us a header. When you say header equals to true, it is also saying, hey, this is the user column, the next one is the post column, next one is the time column. That is what that property does. Every time when we get into a high prompt, we need to run this header so that we can also look at the, we have an idea of what is the header columns and things like that. Quick yes, please. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll continue this one from tomorrow. Let me take uh, a few of you here. Let's see what my list is. And uh, is Nick Wahlberg here? Here we go. Bring up my spreadsheet. Okay. See if this comes up. I'm looking at uh, okay. That is good. Okay. Amulya, are you there? Can you unmute yourself, please? Yes, Navi. Yourself, show up yourself, please. Save it. Okay, great. And let me bring up my questions. Here's the create table. And let's see what I have for you. Come here, say. Okay, one moment, please. Here's Amulya. Okay. So what do we use the self keyword for the Amulya? Self keyword means it is a self-referencing variable. And to, access, to access the attributes, we use self keyword. Good answer. Anything else you can think of? When you call a method, what happens in self? Uh, it will take uh, it will take the, it will access the attributes. Access the attributes, okay. What is the difference between function and method? Uh, function means it is a reusable block of code. We can call it by name, function name, but uh, method means we'll call, we'll call methods by using object names. Mm. Okay. If you want to modify a global variable inside function, what do you do? Uh, we can use a global keyword. Good answer. Change. See, come here and then come here. Okay. Mm. Files. If you want to list all the hidden files in Hadoop, how do you do? ls hyphen a. Very good. I'm um, sorry, in Linux is what I meant, but uh, let's say come back here and let's see what else we have. Let's go up here and what kind of an architecture is Hadoop? Uh, Hadoop is a big data framework and it is used to process a large amount of uh, files. Okay. Um, can you give me an example of master in Hadoop? Master. Yeah. Sorry, Nani. Okay.
Okay. Thank you, Amulya. Thank you, Navin. Yeah. Next one, let's see who we have. Um, next one is Revati. Are you there? Yes. Revati. Yes, Navin. Thank you. Next, Revati, Pravlika, Vishweshwari, Suresh. Please get ready, guys. And let's see, Revati. Let's see, where are you? Okay, show up yourself, put yourself, unmute yourself. Good. Okay, let's see. This is Revati. R E V T H A Revati. Then we have Pravalika. Then we have this Vishwari. This Vishwari. Then we have Suresh Kumar Madana. Suresh. A D A and a mother. Okay. Let's see back to real thing. Print it. Um, let's see. Can you create a global variable inside a function? Yes, Navin. Okay. How do you create it? By taking the global permission. Okay. And um, let's say there are two functions. Okay. And, uh, you're trying to access one variable created in one function, another function. Can you access it? Repeat once. There are two functions. You're trying to access a variable in one function, in another function. Yes, we can access. Okay. Uh, sorry, I mean, we can't access from function to function. Why? Um, because... Uh, Okay. Uh, uh, we can't act, no, we can't act, access because it is a different function. Okay. That's right. Let's see. Um, next one. Can you modify a global variable inside a function more than one time? Yes, Navin. Hmm. Okay. So. So we are any order. Okay. Do you know what is the difference between symbolic link and a directory? Symbolic link directory. Symbolic link versus directory. Directory means uh, present working directory. Okay. Symbolic means uh, uh, symbolic means similar to directory. Okay. What what kind of architecture is Hadoop? Hadoop architecture. Uh, it compromises rules and policies, models. What is the meaning of a data node? Data data nodes node is a slave. Okay. Great. Thank you, 
Say anything? Okay, thank you, Nami. Thanks. Pravalika, can you unmute yourself, please? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Let's see what we have for you. What is the difference between list and tuple, Pravalika? List is uh, mutable, whereas tuple is immutable. What is dictionary? Dictionary is like a, a cup with a label, which has key value pairs in it and is unordered. Can you modify dictionary? Yeah, we can modify dictionary. How do you modify dictionary? Uh, we can modify it as uh, using key value pair, like dictionary of key is equal to value or a dictionary of zero equal. We can modify it using key. Okay. Okay, let's see. Do you remember what the ch mod the command does? Modify the permission of users or groups. Click read, write, and execute. Okay. Do you remember what does the heartbeat mean? No, no. Okay. And let's see what else we have. What does the command Hadoop FS CP do? Copies uh, one file to another. Copies from where to where? Uh, from the local editor to Hadoop uh, editor. And what does the FS put do? No idea, no idea. Okay. Let's okay. so, one moment. Okay. Thank you, Pravalika. Next one, Vishweshwari, can you come online? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, if you want to access all the keys in a dictionary, how will you do it? Access all? All the keys. Keys and dictionaries. Keys and dictionaries. Yeah. Index we can access. Hmm? With what? Index, index value. Index value, okay. Okay. If badminton player is a class, what are the attributes that you can think of? Name, age, rocket, shuttle. Attribute. What are some of the methods you can think of? Uh, shuttle and uh, play. I think play method, right? Okay.
and let's see back to here. Okay. If there is a file, can you, if there is a file in uh, uh, Linux, can you have just uh, read permissions without write permissions? Yes. Okay. The difference between Hadoop FS put and copy copy from local. Copy from local. No, Navin. Okay. No idea. Okay. Do you know what is the command Hadoop FS move do? It moves from one file to another file, the data present inside that. Okay. And what is the meaning of move? It just a copy from, uh, I mean, it just moved from one directory to another directory. Is it a is it a copy? Is it same as copy? No, no. Copy means we are having another copy in the original file, and we are having another duplicate in what we have to uh, in another uh, directory. Some, but move means uh, we are directly moving from one to another. We don't have any duplicate. Okay. Thank you, Vishweshwari. You can mute yourself. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you. Let's see, Suresh Madana, are you there, buddy? Mm, yes, it's Naveen. Yeah. And let's see what you have. Okay. In a badminton player class, we have attribute called bat and ball. What is the problem? Unmute yourself and show yourself, buddy. Hmm. Okay. Can you repeat that question, Naveen? In a class badminton player, you have bat and ball attributes. What is the problem? Hmm. Sorry, I don't know. Okay. And let's see. Okay, if we have a class called car, what are the methods that you can think of? Color and a model. Okay, those are the attributes. What about the methods? Methods means uh, companies, uh, it's uh, Lenovo or Audi or Ronald Duster, like that, or it becomes a methods, I think. Can the attributes of a class be complex objects? Sorry, uh, can you repeat again? Can the attributes of a class be complex objects like lists, uh, tuples, and dictionaries? Yes, I think. Um, let's see. Can there be a file with only write permission without read permission? File with read and write. With write permission, but no read permission. Yes, yes, Mahi. Okay. 
if you want to remove a file in hadoop how what is the command rm rm is linux command right you asking hadoop yeah uh, hadoop fs ipen rm ipen rm ipen r or rmr we use okay what does the command du give you du is uh, means that uh, disk usage okay okay thank you suresh yeah okay so let's we'll stop it here i think it looks like you have some uh, other uh, thing going on so you guys continue and we'll uh, meet tomorrow and continue the journey from here everybody okay with that Lakshmi, I'll send you the results in a moment. Okay, you guys stay safe and keep learning, guys. Please sign off and uh, please go ahead. Continue.